Dash here with TSM Sven after an intense five game series against Cloud9 to qualify for the finals in St. Louis. Take a breath, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm happy. I'm so stoked that we made the finals. It's my first finals in any, at least. Yep. And it's already better than last year, both splits. So it's just pure progress from last year. And that's all I wanted. Uh, and I feel like finally I made progress and then progress backwards in my career. So I'm just so stoked, so happy. Progress is a key topic that I'm going to want to touch on, but before we get into that, I'm going to take us back to the end of game two of this series. 2-0 in favor of Cloud9, both 26-minute games. By all accounts, everyone in the studio, every analyst is looking at this as a Cloud9 victory. It's done and sealed. But from your guys' perspective, you had to pull it back three games in a row. So bring me back to that moment and talk to me about what it was like what were the conversations like and how did you guys ultimately pull this back? After game two, we felt like, okay, we actually got to outplay this game. We're playing to rush, we're starting to drag in front of them and they're just hitting us and then we're all, we got aced and we're like, uh, what guys, what's going on? Why are we just losing? You know, what's, what's happening? And we were like, we have to slow down, first of all, play a little bit slower, play a little bit more scaling because we're playing too much urgent, too like fast paced. We're trying to win too quickly and we don't have to. We just said, slow down and play our game. So you went the full distance. You've made it back to the finals, but the aspirations for TSM aren't just to make it back to the finals. And this is something that you've talked about ever since you uh, came over here to the LCS. Uh, what it means to join an organization with the tradition of winning. Yeah. And that your first year with that organization didn't go to plan. Yeah. So first, what, what does it mean now to have that opportunity at the finals, to take that final step and reassert yourselves as the best team in the league. I, mean, I know what it means to TSM, but for me it's like something else because I'm the only player right now that can still win both any LCS and EU LCS. And for me that's like something important just for myself. It would be so dope to be the first person to win both, you know? Well, so where does that drive come from? Because I think, you know, in the conversation of greatness, when it comes to uh, League of Legends, it, it is easy to say, all right, well, how many titles does a yeah. guy have? But for you, wh where does the drive uh, persist when you, when you have achieved that greatness in w one region? You come somewhere else and it doesn't immediately fall into your lap. Why do you still want it? I think it's not why do you still want it. It's like, I want it so much more. Because mm. you, you always want what you can't have. That's just how it works for humans in general, right? You always want what you can't have. And coming to America was a new challenge for me as a person, as a player. My career is all I have in my life. It sounds a little sad, but it's really, my career is everything to me. And I have friends and family at home, but when I'm over here, I don't have that over here. My family is far away, my friends are far away. I don't have much people here other than my team, my career. So I'm giving it my everything every day. Every day I imagine myself winning the finals. I think to myself, what am I gonna do when I win? Am I gonna stand and scream or am I just gonna jump around and I'm thinking about that moment every day and it's just, it's all I think about. Talk to me about the difficulty then uh, of coming over and, and experiencing that failure. Let's call it a failure, if you don't mind yeah. me saying so. No, it's so. really Be fine, it's more than a failure. Only because of the expectation that you set for yourself is why I'm comfortable yeah. saying that. And because again, of your achievements in the EU LCS, how did you stomach that? How do you come out of 2018 TSM and, and reframe? Yeah, I think after 2018, I had a long time to think like, okay, what the f happened in this year? Like, why did everything go so wrong? Was it just this or this? Or what should I change next year? How should I prepare for next year so this doesn't happen to me again? And I was thinking, I need to make this worth it. I want to make sure that I don't look back at these two years or three years, whatever, how many years I'm here, and think, yeah, that wasn't worth it. That was the worst time of my life. I want to make sure that these years are worth it. I want to make it an experience that I'll remember forever. I remember that one time when we won St. Louis and we went to MSI and we smashed it and everyone loved us again and we broke the curse of TSM sucking internationally, blah, blah, blah. I want to be that guy. I want to be there when that happens, you know? I want to be the guy that brings TSM back to what they were, greatness, domestically. Mm -hmm. But I also want to take them to new heights. I want to be that person that's part of that, you know? Then let's talk about the career of a League of Legends player. Quite obviously, in esports, careers typically don't last that long. What is it a lot that allows you to stay at the top? What is it that you believe makes you a great League of Legends player? I think I have talent, first of all. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair to say. I think I have passion for this game. I just love this game. I still play it in my free time just for fun. So it's like when your hobby is your passion 
and the job is just one, three things together that makes me good at the game and also have me, makes, me, makes me have the drive to keep playing. I think a really intriguing part about your story for me is the fact that you came across the Atlantic and you joined a team with the best North American player on it yeah. in Bjergsen. Mm -hmm. So I want to I know what that experience has been like uh, assimilating into the team working uh, with another great just like yourself. And maybe it's a great problem to have, to have two great players who can carry at different yeah. times, but I still am curious, you know, how you two have developed in your relationship uh, over the last uh, 12 to 15 months. I've played with some good players in the past. I've had luxury of having good teammates in both Origin, in G2, and in TSM, but I've never met someone like Bjergsen. He's just so good at the game, while also being a great teammate, being a leader, and he's so good at keeping emotions out of things and making sure everyone's rational and we're running towards the same goal. And he has a great um, work ethic mm -hmm. and so much discipline. And I admire his way of doing things so much. And I've learned so much from him without even like him teaching me things, you know, just looking at him and how he operates. And I think that working with him has been a pleasure for me so far. And I think there is no discussion that he's the best player in NNA. It has been for a long time. Mm -hmm. and even if he's not, not, not the best player, he's definitely the most valuable to this team. I know that for a fact. So I'm so happy working with him. And I think TSM wouldn't be what they were or what they are without him. All right, so let's get down to brass tacks. The thing we care about most, which is winning an LCS title. Yeah. Isn't it oh so fitting that you'll be playing Team Liquid in the finals? They are back-to-back -back LCS champions right now. They're looking to three-peat as well as hand double lift his sixth title in the LCS. Bjergsen, your teammate, looking to do the same yeah. thing. Talk to me about this finals matchup. We all kind of knew Teal was going to win in SpyQuest. It just, Teal has so much star power, and Double Lift is one of the NA GOATs, only behind Bjergsen, I think. Maybe Sneaky is up there as well. I think that Teal's biggest strength is their bot side, and my biggest strength, or our biggest strength as a team, is that we don't have weakness. Mm. Teal has weaknesses. I think the top side is slacking. Not, not, not slacking, but their weak point. They often sacrifice him and hope that bottling carries. And that works against bad teams, because Dublin is, is good, right? He's skilled and he can carry games by himself. But when he can't carry, because his opponent is as good as him, or maybe even better, not good. but <laughs> if he can't win hard enough, Impact can't do the same as I can by holding it off Broken Blade. We play better around Broken Blade than they do about Impact. Our top winner carries the game harder than their bottling carries the game. Mm -hmm. And they only have one to two play, uh, lanes to play it through, and we have three. And we all know that Jensen doesn't do so well against Bjergsen, so they actually only have one. Right. So unless TL steps up massively for their playstyle, I'm confident I'll match against them. So you guys have a number of win conditions, it seems, that you can meet against a team like TL, but uh, you being Double Lift's counterpart in the bot lane, do you feel any extra responsibility or pressure uh, in that matchup and in, in taking the title back, the crown back? I think I wouldn't have it any other way. Pressure doesn't make me feel any worse. It's like my advantage, because I care so much about this and I want to win. This is the most dope final anyone could ask for. That's so awesome. It's going to be a banger, I'm sure. All right, well, you delivered us one hell of a semifinal. <laughs> I'm hoping for more of the same here in St. Louis. Sven, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. Wish you the best of luck.